Welcome to this first of several, first of actually four planned uh, screencasts here about taking limits using the algebraic limit laws. Uh, in this first one, we're going to look at a basic uh, rational function uh, with the limit as x approaches negative 3, and then we're going to look at the same function with x approaching something else. Uh, so we're going to be using the algebraic limit laws here, no uh, numerical estimates, no graphs. The first order of business is to see if we can evaluate this limit just by direct substitution. Uh, if I can just plug x equals 3 in for x, uh, then then, you know, that, that will work for me here. So let's try this first. And if I just evaluate negative 3 into this function, uh, here's what I get. Uh, and this on top and negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3 minus 3. Now, if I evaluate this out, I get 0 on the top, 9 minus 9. And on the bottom, I get 9 uh, minus 6 minus 3. That's also 0. So um, what does that mean about my limit? Nothing. I have no information. Uh, about whether this limit exists or not, just based on the I, the fact that direct substitution gives me zero over zero. Remember, this uh, zero over zero figure is undefined, undefined, not defined, undefined. Uh, and so, if I try to plug my number in, x equals three, and get zero over zero, the limit could possibly still exist. It just means that I need to do a little more work. And so, let's uh, go and do some of that now. Let's uh, erase this material over here. And the idea here is that I would like to do some algebra and manipulate the thing I'm taking the limit of here first before I do any limit taking. So I'm going to try to simplify my function first uh, before doing anything else. Simplify in the language of rational functions usually means factor and divide off. So I'm going to see if I can factor the top and factor the bottom. I'm looking at the top here and I see x squared minus 9. And that reminds me of a difference of perfect squares. And in fact, uh, this does factor into x minus 3, x plus 3. So that's hopeful. And on the bottom uh, down here, I think I might be able to factor that too. I'm just going to go ahead and set up. Uh, my, my factors here. Whatever numbers go here and here would have to multiply to be negative 3 and add to be plus 2. So I would think I'm going to need a plus 3 and a minus 1. And this is supposed to be x going to negative 3. Sorry about that. Uh, just a quick FOIL method. Uh, this does give me x squared minus 9. This is x squared minus x plus 3x. That gives me the 2x minus 3. So I've got my factoring all set up. And one of the things I noticed that's nice, of course, is that I've uh, got a common factor of x minus x plus 3 on both the top and the bottom. So we'll divide those off. So now this is the same as the limit as x goes to negative 3 of a simpler function. It's simpler, of course, but it's also one where I think I can now go by direct substitution here. Uh, if I try evaluating x equals negative 3 into here, let me just go ahead and do that. I would get negative 3 minus 3 over negative 3 minus 1. Now that's actually a number. Uh, this is not going to give me something undefined. So here comes my answer. Uh, I have negative 6 on the top and negative 4 on the bottom, and that simplifies to 3 halves. Okay, so that's my limit. Uh, so the key uh, concept here, which is going to be really a theme throughout a lot of these limit uh, calculations done with algebra, is first of all, you should always try to directly substitute the number in for x. Uh, never hurts. Uh, it, you get 0 over 0, that will happen a lot, and that means nothing. You don't uh, get any information about your limit uh, if you evaluate the number and get 0 over 0. What it means is we need to go do some algebra and keep processing, and maybe we'll get an answer. Uh, now let's take a look at the same limit uh, done with a different limit point, x going to something else. Okay, so like I said, let's take a look at the uh, a limit with the same rational function as before, but now I have x going to 1 instead of x going to negative 3. Um, again, we should always try to evaluate the uh, limit uh, by plugging in the number directly just to see what happens. And if I do that, I get 1 minus 9 over 1 plus 2 minus 3. That's 0. So this actually, if I evaluate, it gives me 8 over 0. Now, that is... Uh, also undefined. I mean, anytime you divide by zero, it's undefined, but it's not zero over zero. So I'm thinking that we might actually get a slightly different result this time than we did before. Let's uh, pretend to go ahead and try to uh, factor, not pretend to factor, but let's actually go ahead and walk through the same steps as we did before. Let's see what happens. Uh, so I would factor, we factor this top uh, expression into x minus 3, x plus 3, and the bottom factored into x plus 3, uh, x minus 1. So those canceled, and I was left with the limit as x goes to 1 of x minus 3 divided by x minus 1. 
Now, uh, if I try to evaluate the limit by putting the number in, I get uh, negative 2 over 0 if I try this. So I'm kind of not really much in different uh, situation than I was before. I still have division by 0. Now, so this limit cannot be evaluated by direct substitution even after all the algebra has been done. And so this makes me wonder what exactly is happening here near x equals 1. Am I going to be approaching a number and get a limit? Am I going to have a, a, a hole in the graph? Am I going to have an asymptote? I'm not really sure. Uh, you can't really tell from the algebra. So this is where it's handy to have other representations of this function uh, available to us. Let's go now to Excel and see if I can evaluate the limit as x goes to 1 of this function by looking at a sequence of numbers and make a table of data and see if I can figure out what the limit is, if it is indeed equal to anything. So now here we are in Excel and we're going to try to evaluate the limit as x goes to 1 of this rational function that we just saw through numerical means because the algebra wasn't really getting us anywhere. So I want x to go towards 1. That means I want to choose uh, points that are close to 1 and getting closer to 1 but not ever equaling 1. So let's start from the right and start at 2, 1.5, 1 1.1 and, and so on. Let's skip a bit and then start from the left and go 0, 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.99. So I'm going to use my numerical calculations to help support what I'm thinking is happening in the algebra. So now over here in Excel, I'm going to enter in basically the formula you see up here, except where it says x, I have to enter in a cell value. So as always, when I'm doing something with Excel and I want it to calculate, I need to enter equals. I'm going to enter in parentheses and then not x, but the cell reference squared minus 9, close parenthesis, divided by, open parenthesis, the cell, and I'm clicking on the cell here, you can't really see that on the screencast, clicking on cell A2 to enter in A2, or you could just type in A2 like that, like you see here, uh, that squared plus 2 times A2 minus 3. So uh, as you can see, the formula that I'm entering in here is just the uh, exact same thing as what's in B1, but Excel will understand I'm supposed to go over to A2 and pull that information out. I'm just going to drag this uh, formula down through, and I'm going to clear out the uh, blank spot. Okay, so what does this uh, information from the numerical calculations, what does this all tell me about the limit as x goes to 1 of this, form this uh, function here? Well, I can see that as my x's are approaching 1 from the right, uh, from the right-hand side, uh, the numbers are getting really, really large in the negative direction. So what this, is, this stuff is telling me is that the limit if this were all I were doing, the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of this function, let's just call this function f of x uh, to simplify things, the limit as x goes to 1 of this function would be negative infinity. The x goes to 1 from the right, because as x approaches from the right-hand side of 1, the uh, output values are just decreasing without bound. Now, on the other hand, on the other side, uh, as x is approaching 1 from the left, the uh, output values are getting large without bound, and so I would... Uh, say as a one-sided limit that the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of this function is plus infinity. Uh, so this tells me two things. First of all, this tells me that there is a vertical asymptote, a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. A vertical asymptote is a vertical line uh, for that, uh, a vertical asymptote for a function, f, is a vertical line such that as x approaches the line, the function goes infinite in one direction or another. And you can see that that's the case here. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And another thing that tells me is basically just the answer to my question, and this is going to say that the limit as x goes to 1 of my function does not exist, does not exist. And the reason that is, is because uh, I have two different behaviors on either side of this point, number one. On the right-hand side, the function is going to negative infinity. On the left-hand side, it's going to plus infinity. So I'm not sure what the graph of this thing looks like, but if this is one, then the function is going way up this way and way down this way. So there's no single value that the function is approaching as x goes to one. So those two examples with the same function and two different limits so show you how you can use algebra to calculate limits and also the limitations of doing limits with algebra. Sometimes you still have to back up and look at graphical and numerical points of view to really evaluate these limits. Uh, good luck. Ask questions if you have them.